How's it going? Hopefully everyone had a good weekend. I'm still cleaning up my house. I do that from time to time. But we're going to be talking about Donald Trump. Once again in the Georgia elections. Interesting fact that the... This was the only state that he contested the election, but he withdrew the, the, the lawsuit. Going to ground.news, Trump agrees to a $200,000 bond in Putin County. The former President Donald Trump bond in Georgia, criminal case accusing him of conspiring to overturn the 2020 election has been set at $200,000. Trump and his 18 co-defendants have until the deadline to surrender in Georgia with his attorneys finalizing the terms of his surrender, or his surrender later this week. John Eastman, a conservative attorney and co-defendant in the case, has reached a bond agreement with Putin County District Attorney with a bond amount of $100,000. Almost seems like a little racketeering on these people. Same thing that they're accusing them of is the Rico case. According to the reporteronline.com, which is a venture, it's highly factual. It doesn't have any of these tags right here. The bond is set at $200,000 in Georgia case over the efforts to overturn the 2020 election. My question is, is Donald Trump the only person to do these crimes? Or is it the only one that they are choosing to prosecute? I I'm just curious. Let's see here. Donald Trump bond has been set at a $200,000 in Georgia case, accusing the former president to illegally scheming to overturn his 2020 election loss, according to court papers, filed Monday. Trump is also barred from intimidating co-defendants, witnesses, or victims in the case, including on social media, according to the bond agreement signed by the Putin County District Attorney, Fannie Willis. Trump's defense attorney and the judge explicitly included posts on social media or repost a post made by another individual on social media, limiting his previous speech. What if he says that... Um, Mike Pence is an idiot, is that, and he's a witness, is that witness intimidation? Can he not go after Mike Pence, saying as vice president he failed to do his duties and here's how he did it? Isn't that witness, or that's assuming that Mike Pence is a witness, I don't know. I'm just using it as an example. The order says that the former president cannot make any direct or indirect threat of any nature against witnesses or co-defendants is also prohibited from communicating in any way about the facts of the case with co-defendants or witnesses except through attorneys. The order set Trump's bond for racketeering influence and corruption organization or RICO charge at 80000 and adds $1,000 for each of the other 12 counts that is facing the bond amount defendant must pay as a form of collateral to ensure that they show up in court ahead of trial. I don't think he's a flight risk. He's running for president. He's surrounded by Secret Service. The Secret Service has a way of uh, turning into U.S. Marshals to make sure that he's aboard. He's at that court date. So I don't think bond is necessary here. I mean, I understand the whole reason for the bond. Let's see here. Willis has set the deadline of noon Friday for Trump and his 18 co-defendants to turn themselves in at the Putin County Jail to be booked. The prosecutor has proposed the arrangements for the defendants following the week of September 5th. She has said that she wants to try the defendants collectively and bring the case to trial in March of next year during, I guess, primary season, which will put Put it in the heat of the presidential nominee season, as I mentioned that. They're trying to silence him. I think this is a political witch hunt, whether or not that they actually have evidence or not. I think they're trying to prevent him from running a successful campaign. 
I mean, why couldn't they brought this last year or year prior? That's my only criticism of this. I mean, if he committed a crime, yes, he should be held responsible. But the timing is very suspect. A Trump spokesperson did not immediately respond to the request for comment. A phone message seeking comment was also left for the attorney for the former president. Trump was charged last week in the case along with a slew of allies who the prosecutor says conspired to subvert the will of the voters and the district bid to keep the Republican in the White House after he lost to Democrat Joe Biden. Trump has denied any wrongdoing and he characterizes the case and the three others he is facing as an effort to hurt the 2024 presidential campaign. I mean, if there was merits to this case, then they should have brought him earlier or wait until after the election. That's just my personal opinion because the illusion is that they're trying to prevent him to run the campaign because they don't want him in the White House. And I'm pretty sure, I know the Ukraine phone call was the perfect one, but that was more of him going after Joe Biden that hadn't stepped into the arena as one of the candidates in the Democratic primary. That was the crux or the reason for the impeachment because he was going after Joe Biden, allegedly. So they impeached him over that phone call. If my memory serves me correctly. Trump has been rallying against Putin County DA since before he was indicted and he singled out Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, a Republican, who rebuffed his uh, efforts to overturn the election by Name in a social media post Monday morning. Bond was also set Monday for the three lawyers who were indicted along with Trump. For each of them, the bond for the RICO charge was set to at 20000 with varying amounts for the other charges that they face. John Eastman and Kenneth Cheesebro each had a bond set at $100,000, while Ray Smith was bonded at 50000 Bail bondsman Scott Hall, who was accused of participating in the breach of election equipment in rural Coffee County, has his bond set at a thousand. Other defense include former White House Chief Mark Meadows, which is trying to get the case dismissed. It'd be interesting to see how that plays out. Trump attorney and former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani and Trump Administration Justice Department. Official Jeff Clark, who aided the then president's effort to underdo his election loss in Georgia. The Georgia indictment comes just two weeks after the Justice Department special counsel charged Trump in a separate case in the vast conspiracy to overturn the election. Besides the two election related cases, Trump faced a federal indictment, accusing him of illegally hoarding classified documents, as well as the New York State charging him with falsifying business records. Associated Press reporter Kate. From back of Atlanta contributed. Interesting. Was this not written? Yeah, it looks like it came from the Associated Press. I guess I could have went with that one, but I didn't see it on the uh, short list I have here. Let's see what's under all. Mm, nothing. Let's see on your left. Nope. Definitely not going to be on the right. I don't know. So I'm just using ground news. I know this is probably an effort to make sure I read a highly factual article. That's all I care about. Because I'm interested in the truth. Not to be muddied up by opinion pieces on either side. And I'm not really interested in reading comments today because I'm just not in the mood. With that being said, that is my video for today. I do think even if he did commit crimes, the timing makes it look like a witch hunt to prevent him to have a successful campaign and to make sure that he's under indictment so the other GOP candidates say, look, I'm not under indictment. I'm not going to risk prison term, prison time I'll be able to start in day one with no legal issues. Some voters may be turned off by the uh, indictments. Others may be more bold in the vote for Trump. It's 
And there's people like me that pot, it's not going to vote in the GOP primary, mainly because I'm trying to save Austin. And if I could prevent a certain DA from even being in the general election, then it's worth me voting in the Democratic primaries. So that's where I stand. Be interested to see how this all plays out. It may actually go to the Supreme Court and every single case will get dropped because there's this theory that Robert Barnes says that once you're a president, in order to be charged criminally, you must be impeached, regardless if the crime happened after you were president. It's an interesting theory. I don't know if it holds water. It should hold water in some in many people's opinion. Well, not many, but at least Robert Barnes and a few others. With that being said, that is my video for today. And have yourself a wonderful day, morning, or evening.